The Trundle The Trundle is an Iron Age Hilford on St. Roche's Hill about 4 miles, 6 kilometers, north of Chichester, Sussex, England, built on the site of a causewayed enclosure, a form of early Neolithic earthwork found in northwestern Europe. Causewayed enclosures were built in England from shortly before 3700 BC until about 3300 BC. They are characterized by the full or partial enclosure of an area with ditches that are interrupted by gaps, or causeways. Their purpose is not known, they may have been settlements, meeting places, or ritual sites. Hilferts were built as early as 1000 BC, in the Late Bronze Age, and continued to be built through the Iron Age until shortly before the Roman occupation. A chapel dedicated to St. Roche was built on the hill around the end of the 14th century, it was in ruins by 1570. A windmill and a beacon were subsequently built on the hill. The site was occasionally used as a meeting place in the post-medieval period. The Hillford is still a substantial earthwork, but the Neolithic site was unknown until 1925 when archaeologist O.G.S. Crawford obtained an aerial photograph of the Trundle, clearly showing additional structures inside the ramparts of the Hillford. Causewayed enclosures were new to archaeology at the time, with only five known by 1930, and the photograph persuaded archaeologist E. Cecil Kerwin to excavate the site in 1928 and 1930. These early digs established a construction date of about 500 BC to 100 BC for the Hilford and proved the existence of the Neolithic site. In 2011 the Gathering Time project published an analysis of radiocarbon dates from almost 40 British causeway enclosures, including some from the Trundle. The conclusion was that the Neolithic part of the site was probably constructed no earlier than the mid-4th millennium BC. A review of the site in 1995 by Alistair Oswald noted the presence of 15 possible Iron Age house platforms within the Hilfert's ramparts. The Trundle The Trundle is an Iron Age Hilfert on St. Roche's Hill about 4 miles, 6 kilometers, north of Chichester, Sussex, England, built on the site of a causewayed enclosure, a form of early Neolithic earthwork found in northwestern Europe. Causewayed enclosures were built in England from shortly before 3700 BC until about 3300 BC. They are characterized by the full or partial enclosure of an area with ditches that are interrupted by gaps, or causeways. Their purpose is not known, they may have been settlements, meeting places, or ritual sites. Hilferts were built as early as 1000 BC, in the Late Bronze Age, and continued to be built through the Iron Age until shortly before the Roman occupation. A chapel dedicated to St. Roche was built on the hill around the end of the 14th century, it was in ruins by 1570. A windmill and a beacon were subsequently built on the hill. The site was occasionally used as a meeting place in the post-medieval period. The Hilford is still a substantial earthwork, but the Neolithic site was unknown until 1925 when archaeologist O.G.S. Crawford obtained an aerial photograph of the Trundle, clearly showing additional structures inside the ramparts of the Hilford. Causewayed enclosures were new to archaeology at the time, with only five known by 1930, and the photograph persuaded archaeologist E. Cecil Kerwin to excavate the site in 1928 and 1930. These early digs established a construction date of about 500 BC to 100 BC for the Hilford and proved the existence of the Neolithic site. In 2011 the Gathering Time project published an analysis of radiocarbon dates from almost 40 British causeway enclosures, including some from the Trundle. The conclusion was that the Neolithic part of the site was probably constructed no earlier than the mid-4th millennium BC. A review of the site in 1995 by Alistair Oswald noted the presence of 15 possible Iron Age house platforms within the Hilfert's ramparts. Site and Interpretation The summit on which both the Causeway enclosure and the Hilfert stand is St. Roche's Hill, an outcrop of the upper chalk that lies at the western end of a ridge. The hill is four miles north of Chichester, near to Goodwood Racecourse. It rises above the neighboring hills and so is clearly visible from all sides. There is an Ordnance Survey OS, trig point at the top of the hill, which has an elevation of 206 meters, 676 feet, an earlier trigonometrical station, placed on the hill in 1791, 
was probably at the same location. The causeway enclosure consists of at least four circular or partly circular ditches. The exact nature of these earthworks is now hard to determine because the Hilfert partly overlies the earlier ditches. The innermost ditch, which encloses an area of 0.95 hectares, 2.3 acres, has an internal bank, and may have been the first of the Neolithic ditches to be dug. Concentric with this is a second ditch that lies a short distance outside the innermost ditch, this second ditch was thought by E. Cecil Kerwin, who excavated the site in 1928 and 1930, to spiral out so that the circuit extended more than a full circle around the center of the enclosure. Kerwin named the outermost part of this earthwork the spiral ditch, at the point on the west where it paralleled the second ditch, but later surveys make the relationships of the ditches less certain, and it is now thought that the appearance of these ditches may be the result of multiple enclosure ditches dug over a long period. A further, outer, ditch was thought by Kerwin to only appear from under the Iron Age earthworks at the north of the site, but it has since been suggested that crop marks visible to the west represent part of this ditch. There may also be further early earthworks that have been completely overlain by the Hilford. The causeway enclosure ditches were probably dug in the first half of the 4th millennium BC. The site was one of the first to be confirmed as a causeway enclosure by excavation. The other four known by 1930 were Whitehawk Camp, Knapp Hill, Windmill Hill, and Abingdon. The Iron Age Hilford consists of a well-defined bank and ditch, with an smaller outer bank, in an irregular nine-sided polygon. There are two gaps, at the east-northeast and west-southwest edges, indicating entrances. The depth of the ditch and the height of the bank vary, with the highest point reaching 5.5 meters, 6.0 yards, above the bottom of the ditch. The ditches enclose an area of about 5.66 hectares, 14.0 acres. A linear crop mark outside the banks has not been excavated but archaeologist Alistair Oswald, who surveyed the site in 1995 for the Royal Commission on the Historical Monuments of England Birch, considered it to be no earlier than Iron Age. Oswald also noted the presence of 15 depressions in the soil within the ramparts that could indicate Iron Age house platforms, and three areas that may have been Roman building platforms. There are two dikes to the north, crossing two of the ridges that approach the hill, the eastern of these included a crouched burial, revealed when a car park was constructed there and thought to be dated to the Bronze Age, based on the presence of what appeared to be a round barrow. The hill is named for Saint Roche, a French saint who died no earlier than the mid-14th century. A chapel dedicated to him is known to have existed on the hill, it is unlikely to have been built much before the end of that century. A document from 1570 refers to it as the Late Chapelle of Saint Rux, so it was apparently already in ruins by that date, probably having been abandoned or destroyed during the Reformation. It appears on a 1575 map, but a 1595 map simply describes the hilltop as a castle. A 1723 engraving of the hill shows a ruined building not yet reduced to its foundations, which probably represents the chapel. In 1645, William Colley reported in Parliament that a thousand clubmen, one of several local militias formed to oppose the depredations of both sides in the English Civil War, had assembled on the hill. There was a beacon on the hill from the late 16th century until at least the early 19th century, it is mentioned in 1586, though it does not appear on a 1595 map, but it is recorded on maps dated 1646 and 1675, and appears again on an OS map in 1813. The beacon is recorded as an alternative name for the hill in 1920. Site and Interpretation The summit on which both the Causeway enclosure and the Hilfert stand is St. Roche's Hill, an outcrop of the upper chalk that lies at the western end of a ridge. The hill is four miles north of Chichester, near to Goodwood Racecourse. It rises above the neighboring hills and so is clearly visible from all sides. There is an Ordnance Survey OS, trig point at the top of the hill, which has an elevation of 206 meters, 676 feet, an earlier trigonometrical station, placed on the hill in 1791, was probably at the same location. The causeway enclosure consists of at least four circular or partly circular ditches. The exact nature of these earthworks is now hard to determine because the Hilfert partly overlies the earlier ditches. The innermost ditch, 
which encloses an area of 0.95 hectares, 2.3 acres, has an internal bank, and may have been the first of the Neolithic ditches to be dug. Concentric with this is a second ditch that lies a short distance outside the innermost ditch, this second ditch was thought by E. Cecil Kerwin, who excavated the site in 1928 and 1930, to spiral out so that the circuit extended more than a full circle around the center of the enclosure. Kerwin named the outermost part of this earthwork the spiral ditch, at the point on the west where it paralleled the second ditch, but later surveys make the relationships of the ditches less certain, and it is now thought that the appearance of these ditches may be the result of multiple enclosure ditches dug over a long period. A further, outer, ditch was thought by Kerwin to only appear from under the Iron Age earthworks at the north of the site, but it has since been suggested that crop marks visible to the west represent part of this ditch. There may also be further early earthworks that have been completely overlain by the Hilford. The causeway enclosure ditches were probably dug in the first half of the 4th millennium BC. The site was one of the first to be confirmed as a causeway enclosure by excavation, the other four known by 1930 were Whitehawk Camp, Knapp Hill, Windmill Hill, and Abingdon. The Iron Age Hilfert consists of a well-defined bank and ditch, with an smaller outer bank, in an irregular nine-sided polygon. There are two gaps, at the east-northeast and west-southwest edges, indicating entrances. The depth of the ditch and the height of the bank vary, with the highest point reaching 5.5 meters, 6.0 yards, above the bottom of the ditch. The ditches enclose an area of about 5.66 hectares, 14.0 acres. A linear crop mark outside the banks has not been excavated but archaeologist Alistair Oswald, who surveyed the site in 1995 for the Royal Commission on the Historical Monuments of England, Birch, considered it to be no earlier than Iron Age. Oswald also noted the presence of 15 depressions in the soil within the ramparts that could indicate Iron Age house platforms, and three areas that may have been Roman building platforms. There are two dikes to the north, crossing two of the ridges that approach the hill, the eastern of these included a crouched burial, revealed when a car park was constructed there, and thought to be dated to the Bronze Age, based on the presence of what appeared to be a round barrow. The hill is named for Saint Roche, a French saint who died no earlier than the mid-14th century. A chapel dedicated to him is known to have existed on the hill, it is unlikely to have been built much before the end of that century. A document from 1570 refers to it as the Late Chapelle of St. Rooks, so it was apparently already in ruins by that date, probably having been abandoned or destroyed during the Reformation. It appears on a 1575 map, but a 1595 map simply describes the hilltop as a castle. A 1723 engraving of the hill shows a ruined building not yet reduced to its foundations, which probably represents the chapel. In 1645, William Colley reported in Parliament that a thousand clubmen, one of several local militias formed to oppose the depredations of both sides in the English Civil War, had assembled on the hill. There was a beacon on the hill from the late 16th century until at least the early 19th century, it is mentioned in 1586, though it does not appear on a 1595 map, but it is recorded on maps dated 1646 and 1675, and appears again on an OS map in 1813. The beacon is recorded as an alternative name for the hill in 1920. Inhabitants who wish to level the site within the new Hilfert's ramparts. The boundary between these two layers he suggested was the turf line that would have been the surface of the unoccupied site throughout the intervening Bronze Age. The next layer, above the infill, was full of early Iron Age pottery shirts, and Kerwin concluded that this layer related to the Iron Age occupation period. Flakes of flint were frequent in the lowest levels, and rarer in the Iron Age levels, whereas pot boilers, stones heated and dropped in pots of water to heat the water, were more common in the Iron Age levels. Fragments of querns, stones used to grind cereals into flour, were found, large fragments from the Iron Age, and smaller fragments from Neolithic contexts. All but one of the pits were found to date from the Iron Age. The exception was Pit 4 which was shallower than the others and contained no finds other than some ox and sheep bones, it could not be dated but it was later noted that it was similar in shape to one of the Neolithic pits at Whitehawk Camp, and might have been dug at the same time as the causeway enclosure. 
Kerwin was able to determine the use of some of the pits. Pit 1 had apparently been under a dwelling late in the Iron Age, and contained rubbish such as broken pottery from that period. Pits 3 and 5 were also rubbish pits. Pit 2, in the middle of the western entrance to the Hilford, included two large post holes, but it had apparently been filled in soon after it had been dug. Another pit was located by the Bozer in the same position in the eastern entrance and Kerwin was only able to conclude that both pits formed an integral part of the scheme of defense of the two entrances. While digging pit 2 Kerwin found a paving layer of blocks of flint, some of which had been squared off, above the pit. There was no evidence that allowed direct dating of this layer, but Kerwin suggested that the patination of the flint surfaces where they had been trimmed implied that they were laid by the Iron Age builders of the Hilford. The area where the outer Neolithic ditch met the northern Iron Age rampart was excavated, and here Kerwin found a crouched burial of a woman, 25 to 30 years old and about 1.5 meters, 4 feet 11 in, tall. The skeleton lay below a small cairn of chalk, with the hole dug into the upper part of the Neolithic level, and the rampart at that point had been built after the burial. Kerwin suggested the burial dated to no later than the early Bronze Age. The animal bones found included oxen, sheep, and pig, and a very few roe deer. Sheep bones were more common in the Iron Age than in the Neolithic levels. One piece of bone, found in the Neolithic layers, had been shaped into a phallus, and had been sawn off the original bone with a flint saw. The snails found in the Neolithic levels indicated that conditions were much damper at that time. The snails from the later levels were thought not to be all contemporary, but suggested that at the time of the Bronze Age burial and the construction of the Hilfert conditions were damper than the present, but less so than in Neolithic times. Kerwin estimated that the Neolithic enclosure was constructed in about 2000 BC, and the Hilfert somewhere between 500 and 100 BC. Kerwin, 1930. Kerwin returned to the Trundle in 1930, excavating from 5 August to 5 September. The inner ditch was open just south of the 1928 cutting, IDC, and this time the material in each identifiable layer of soil was removed together, stratigraphic excavation, which is the modern method, instead of by horizontal spits of fixed depth, as had been the case in nearly all of the 1928 excavation. Cutting IDC had revealed part of one of the causeways in the inner ditch, and the other side of the causeway, just north of IDC, was excavated in 1930. Two other cuttings were opened in the second ditch, between the two areas dug in 1928. These cuttings lacked the Iron Age occupation layer found in the inner ditch cuttings, but revealed that the ditch had been recut, with a V-shaped profile evident in the layers. Clearing the edges around this cutting revealed post holes around the edge, and this led Kerwin to reopen the two adjacent areas dug in 1928, revealing post holes on the lips of those ditches as well. At the time Kerwin concluded that the second ditch must have consisted of pit dwellings, but in 1954, Stuart Piggott, an archaeologist whose first excavation had been the 1928 dig at the Trundle, argued that the post holes dated from the Iron Age, and Kerwin agreed. Inhabitants who wished to level the site within the new Hilfert's ramparts. The boundary between these two layers he suggested was the turf line that would have been the surface of the unoccupied site throughout the intervening Bronze Age. The next layer, above the infill, was full of early Iron Age pottery shirts, and Kerwin concluded that this layer related to the Iron Age occupation period. Flakes of flint were frequent in the lowest levels, and rarer in the Iron Age levels, whereas pot boilers, Stones heated and dropped in pots of water to heat the water, were more common in the Iron Age levels. Fragments of querns, stones used to grind cereals into flour, were found, large fragments from the Iron Age, and smaller fragments from Neolithic contexts. All but one of the pits were found to date from the Iron Age. The exception was Pit 4 which was shallower than the others and contained no finds other than some ox and sheep bones, it could not be dated but it was later noted that it was similar in shape to one of the Neolithic pits at Whitehawk Camp, and might have been dug at the same time as the causeway enclosure. Kerwin was able to determine the use of some of the pits, Pit 1 had apparently been under a dwelling late in the Iron Age, and contained rubbish such as broken pottery from that period, Pits 3 and 5 were also rubbish pits. Pit 2, in the middle of the western entrance to the Hilfert, included two large post holes, but it had apparently been filled in soon after it had been dug. 
Another pit was located by the Bozer in the same position in the eastern entrance and Kerwin was only able to conclude that both pits formed an integral part of the scheme of defense of the two entrances. While digging pit 2 Kerwin found a paving layer of blocks of flint, some of which had been squared off, above the pit. There was no evidence that allowed direct dating of this layer, but Kerwin suggested that the patination of the flint surfaces where they had been trimmed implied that they were laid by the Iron Age builders of the Hilford. The area where the outer Neolithic ditch met the northern Iron Age rampart was excavated, and here Kerwin found a crouched burial of a woman, 25 to 30 years old and about 1.5 meters, 4 feet 11 in, tall. The skeleton lay below a small cairn of chalk, with the hole dug into the upper part of the Neolithic level, and the rampart at that point had been built after the burial. Kerwin suggested the burial dated to no later than the early Bronze Age. The animal bones found included oxen, sheep, and pig, and a very few roe deer, sheep bones were more common in the Iron Age than in the Neolithic levels. One piece of bone, found in the Neolithic layers, had been shaped into a phallus, and had been sawn off the original bone with a flint saw. The snails found in the Neolithic levels indicated that conditions were much damper at that time, the snails from the later levels were thought not to be all contemporary, but suggested that at the time of the Bronze Age burial and the construction of the Hilfert conditions were damper than the present, but less so than in Neolithic times. Kerwin estimated that the Neolithic enclosure was constructed in about 2000 BC, and the Hilfert somewhere between 500 and 100 BC. Kerwin, 1930. Kerwin returned to the Trundle in 1930, excavating from 5 August to 5th of September. The inner ditch was open just south of the 1928 cutting, IDC, and this time the material in each identifiable layer of soil was removed together, stratigraphic excavation, which is the modern method, instead of by horizontal spits of fixed depth, as had been the case in nearly all of the 1928 excavation. Cutting IDC had revealed part of one of the causeways in the inner ditch, and the other side of the causeway, just north of IDC, was excavated in 1930. Two other cuttings were opened in the second ditch, between the two areas dug in 1928. These cuttings lacked the Iron Age occupation layer found in the inner ditch cuttings, but revealed that the ditch had been recut, with a V-shaped profile evident in the layers. Clearing the edges around this cutting revealed post holes around the edge, and this led Kerwin to reopen the two adjacent areas dug in 1928, revealing post holes on the lips of those ditches as well. At the time Kerwin concluded that the second ditch must have consisted of pit dwellings, but in 1954, Stuart Piggott, an archaeologist whose first excavation had been the 1928 dig at the Trundle, argued that the post holes dated from the Iron Age, and Kerwin agreed. A detailed survey of the site was made by the Richmond 1995, covering both the Hilford and the Causeway enclosure with the resulting report authored by Alistair Oswald. This was part of a broader project by Richmond titled Industry and Enclosure in the Neolithic. It was this survey that identified the 15 possible Iron Age house platforms within the ramparts, and Oswald also noted three possible Roman building platforms. Subsequent watching briefs in 1997, 2000, 2002, and 2013 produced nothing of archaeological interest. Preservation and Presentation the Trundle was listed as a scheduled monument in 1933. It lies within the South Downs National Park, and there are three walking trails that give access to the site. In June July 2010, the Trundle was temporary host to Artemis, a 30 feet tall bronze sculpture of a horse designed by sculptor Nick Fidian Green. The sculpture was taken to Australia in 2011. Notes For example, there is evidence that both Crickley Hill and Hambledon Hill were attacked, 